Hey, I'm the street guy. Check this out. Look, this ain't no regular tortilla fiesta here. Look at this. Tortilla soup kicked up. Look at that. Huh? Check this out. Roasted corn, barbecue beef, chili con queso, guacamole, salsa verde. Look at all these garnishes I got. Check this out. You get a wrap like this, little barbecue beef, bam. Hey, tortillas here. Look at this, little chili con queso like that. <whistles> Come on, who's doing this in New York City? You know who, I'm the street guy. Hey, get your tortillas here. I'm the street guy. Tortillas here, chips, salsa, hey. <laughs> crowd tonight. I think this is the quietest crowd we had all year. Do you guys think that or no? Yeah. Emerald Lagasse here. Tonight, we're cooking with something that's referred to as Mexico's everyday bread. It's the tortilla. Mm. How about starting out with Emerald's tortilla soup? Huh? Yeah. We'll see if it's We'll see if it's better than them, the street guys, tortilla soup. We got some roasted pork enchiladas we're gonna do. Oh, cheek mechangas, boy. We're gonna kick them right, like, right out the box. And then, banana quesadillas. Are you guys ready or what? Get ready, folks, because it's tortilla land right here on Emerald We have a treat for you guys tonight. First of all, we've got the incredible Doc Gibbs and Cliff in the house. Rosa Mexicano. Rosa Mexicano. Is your restaurant yes. here in New York? Yes. 15 years. 15 years. And your first name is Nieves. Nieves. And your last name? Rosillo. Rosillo. We're delighted to have you. Mm, thank you. Give Muchas it up gracias. for her because we're going to uh, kick it up. We are delighted to have you. Gracias. Before we get there, we got uh, all kinds of treats for you guys. But, uh, you know, these tortillas have come uh, these days in so many sizes and so many flavors. Uh, but the real, real deal, flour or corn tortilla, uh, we're going to take a few of them, and uh, we're going to do some tortillas for a lot of you folks tonight with our good friend. Also, what we're going to do is we're going to do a few kicked up dishes. We're going to tell you a little bit about masa flour. I'm going to tell you a little bit about tortilla dough. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to make my tortilla dough, and then tortillas kicked up for everybody. Stick around. <laughs> Hey, tortillas, tortillas, I'm the street guy here. Man, I can't believe this. Three and a half hours I've been out here. Not one customer. I gotta get out of this neighborhood. This location stinks. Hey, I'm the street guy. Moving up, moving up. Hey, I'm the street guy here. Tortillas. Welcome back. 
Welcome back. Welcome back. And uh, I want to, uh, again, say hi to my uh, special guest. 15 years in New York City. Truly uh, a spectacular restaurant. And um, you're going to just do your tortillas right now, huh? That's right. Okay. Well, uh, while you do a few of these, well, what, what, are we, what are we looking for? I mean, we have the dough. Because I'm going to show folks uh, at home in a minute uh, kind of how easily they can do it. But, I mean... You, what are you doing in the restaurant? You must make a lot of tortillas in the yeah, restaurant today. We have today. a special grill. A special grill Just in the restaurant. Just for tortillas. I know they had that uh, guacamole yeah. um, table side. Right. Kicked up, table side guacamole. Oh, yeah, baby. And that's a beautiful press you got there. Now, that's not one of those new ones either. No, this is very old. And you're using, you're using beside the press, plastic. you're using this plastic wrap. Yeah. This is very light plastic. It's, it's, yeah, it's still like a, from a plastic uh, bag. Right. You just cut it in round. Okay. And uh, anything else? I see that your, your dough is pretty moist, and you're working it with a little bit of oil as well. And, of course, you have your own tortilla press here that you have, as well as this griddle. Oh, yeah. This is just uh, from here. with a, From the masa? Yeah, with um, lukewarm water. Mm -hmm. You just mix it, and it comes out that way. Okay. So I'm going to uh, show these folks kind of an emerald version of this dough. Is that okay? Okay. While you're doing that, and we'll come back. Over there in a second. Just make yourself at home. Thank you. All right, so we're going to see how easy this thing is here. I got the masa flour. I might have to call you if in the, any any trouble. I might have to call you up here. <laughs> I'm using a little bit of lard. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> we're going to break that up. A little bit of salt as well. And then... Can smell a lot of tortillas in here. Once we incorporate that lot into the flour, we're going to take some cold water a little bit at a time and see if we can make our own dough so that you can make dough right at home just like the professionals do. We'll add a little bit more water. Keep just bringing this all around until you get a nice dough consistency. It's a little dough music by Doc Gibbs. <laughs> Maybe uh, you can give us the tortilla dough music, Doc. <laughs> all right, now you can see, folks, that this is all coming together. And uh, it's fairly moist as this is here. I want to see if my dough is as moist as your dough. <laughs> Yours is a little more moist than mine. But this is, has lard. This yes. has no lard. No lard at all. No. Why, what you prefer? No it, lard. No lard. You're not a pork fat person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a fat person. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. All right. We, <laughs> we're rolling inside. Touche. <laughs> All right, I got. <clears throat> I rolled my dough like this now in some plastic wrap that people at home can do. You can keep it in the ice box. She's uh, keeping an eye on me here to make sure that I'm <laughs> doing this right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut. How big are you using yours? Feel how moist that is. Try one oh, on yours. Nice. Try one on yours. <laughs> you didn't switch them. No. <laughs> <laughs> that press is amazing. So we got lard, no lard. All right. I'm going to do my homemade griddle right here, my friend. This is what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of this paper, take the press. Use that a little bit like that at home so it doesn't stick. The guys in the uh, kitchen today and gals, we were kind of wondering... Look at this. I got a mess on my hands. 
How come you made it look so easy? You need a hand? I may need a hand. You keep doing them over there. See what I did here? That's called backup. I'm like the master of backup. All right, we're going to keep kicking the tortilla program up. Don't even think about touching that dial. It's pretty bad when you got time to eat your own stuff, you know? Season's good. Yeah, it's delicious. What's wrong with these people? Everybody, you got our good friends from Rosa Mexicano here. We're doing tortillas. Oh. <laughs> good, you see that? Making a couple a of more, a couple of more cebases. My Spanish is going to be even better. <laughs> I promise. Hang in there. Well, who's your assistant? Annabel. Hey, Annabel. Nice to nice to have you here. Welcome. We're delighted to have you. I have my friend Joel here, and uh, we're delighted that uh, they're doing a little chicken and. Little duck tacos for you guys are just gonna kind of go out. Don't get too excited. And hey, why aren't you here at home? Because we're live in New York City, aren't we, guys? Right? <laughs> little con queso, little tomato, little lettuce. Right. She's fast. Well, how come mine didn't swell up like this? <laughs> I don't know. I gotta, I'm gonna have to practice. I'm the street guy a little more. <laughs> nice to have you. Joe, you. let me know if you need anything, okay? okay. And uh, little duck, little chicken. Speaking about chicken, one of my favorite soups, I mean personal favorite soups to make, not only with chicken. We're always looking for a little twist on chicken. I mean, we get all of these hits. It's unbelievable on the internet, that WWW thing, you know, that wah, 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 <laughs> Food Network. It's amazing how many people, like, they're always constantly looking for creative chicken recipes. And this is a great little twist on one right here. So uh, I recommend that you do this. You go get one of those big fryers, or I use a hen, like a big hen. I like to use a hen. It's older. Also for, a, uh, for great gumbo as well. Wash it really good. That's one thing you got to do. You know, when you cut the bag... It's got all that stuff in it. You need to really, really be careful when you're working with chicken. Rinse it really good under cold water. You put the chicken on the board. Make sure you rinse your board. Make sure you wash your hands. I think you get the picture, okay? Health 101. <laughs> wash your hands. Then, once the chicken's happy, because he's just got out of the shower, you put him in a pot like this. Then, what you do? You season them up, a little salt. You want it saltier, more salt. I like to use a little fresh pepper. Then I take an onion or two, put that in there. I take some carrot. If you don't like carrot, don't use it. Basically, I use a little meripoise, what this is here. Because, I mean, look, I don't know where you buy your chicken. We get our chickens, they don't come seasoned. So you gotta make it happen, you know? You doing all right, my friend? They look fantastic. Don't forget the fish one for me. Okay, now, you with me so far? H2O, right over it. Just to cover the bird, right? Now, a couple of bay leaves, happy. A few cloves of garlic, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then what I like to do, take a little bit of this crushed red pepper, this pimentum weed, this stuff, my mom, you know, 
Just kind of kick it up. All right. Bring it to a boil. Wow, we're really cooking. <laughs> Let it start simmering, happy, happy. It'll almost float when it's done. Trust me, okay? Then what you do, you got chicken stock now, and you got your chicken. And you got tasty chicken stock. Hey, Jill, you don't have to duck. It's okay. <laughs> oh, she's, look, right to the boys. <laughs> It's an amazing team we got here at Emerald Life. <laughs> Take the bird out, save the stock. You don't want to do anything tonight, you're tired, put it in the refrigerator, there's always tomorrow. When you're ready for kicked up chicken tortilla soup, check this out. Oh, I know. I am playing so deep right now with my emotions, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Sauce pot on, a little bit of oil. Take the chicken, take the meat off the chicken. You don't like the fat, take the fat off the chicken. You're not going to upset me. What I like to do if I have some time is after I take all the meat, I wrap it, put it in the ice box, keep it nice and cold. I take the bones that are left over, put it back in my stock, and I let it come up to another boil, particularly when I'm going to use it like that for that, like that day or that evening, just to enhance it a little more. Don't you like that word, enhance? <laughs> All right, now, start with more onions. You know, four, five, whatever you like, two. I mean, I, I brought some onions the other day. They were this big. They were that, I mean, they were that big, they were scary. The kind that you cut, the whole neighborhood was crying. <laughs> So I'm now, I'm into the small onions. Keep it in the house, you know what I mean, Doc? Keep it in the house. All right, so the onions sweat down three, four, five minutes, okay? I take one jalapeno pepper. Take two jalapeno peppers. Listen, you want it spicy, you keep the seeds in it. You want it a little tamer, take the seeds out. So we're going to add the jalapeno in there. More garlic, 40 cloves, all right? <laughs> little bay leaf, little oregano. And then when all of that starts, you smell that already, how happy it is? That's how simple it is. Look, then you take a couple of tomatoes like that. Now, once that cooks for a little bit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you take the chicken stock, you want to strain it, great. You don't want to strain it, you're not going to hurt my feelings. Put it right in there. You bring it to a boil, you let it simmer for about 20, 30 minutes. Chicken stocks, they don't need to go on like for this hours and hours marathon, okay? Comes up to a boil, now what we're going to do is this. You take some of this great lady's tortillas, or you can take my pork fat ones that we made earlier. <laughs> And you got them like this, right? You got them. I'm going to show you something right now. What you do, you can also use the, uh, the store-bought, I think they stole my knives again. But, uh, you know, the, these are easy to make, but watch what you do. We're getting this ready for the tortilla soup coming up to a boil. You take these tortillas like this, and what you do in about 350-degree oil, 360, is you're going to fry them. You know why? I'm not telling you why right now, because you better not even think about touching that dial. When we get back, another notch! Stick around! <laughs> Tortilla soup. This is she. This oh, is she. Emmy as in the TV award. Oh, hey, Emmy, how you and doing? Absolutely. She's in the mood for everything all the time. She does. Is all there right. extra bam in there for Oh, her? yeah, I got, I got some extra bam. It's a little hot now. Oh, what a lucky girl. Oh, look at this. All right, I'm going to give it to Mom. What's your name? That's Lucky. Oh, Lucky. 
Lucky? I wish I was lucky. There's no customers right now. It's unbelievable. Oh. The neighborhood's going to the dogs, you know what I mean? <laughs> Gibbs and Cliff, everybody. Yeah. Emma Lagasse here. If you're just joining us, Tortillas, baby, are the star of the show. And uh, I want to uh, welcome once again from our good friends from Rosa Mexicana. Rosa here Mexicana. In New York City, right in here. New welcome. York City, See, yeah. and you're the quiet one over there. I'm <laughs> coming to you later. And thank you for all the help. Everybody's happy. Well, almost everybody's happy. The other ones we're going to make happen right now. We added the uh, beautiful tomatoes, and I said we're going to bring it up, let it simmer maybe for about 30 minutes. That's um, what is happening right now. And then what we did, we fried those tortillas. You see what we did? We fried them. Reason for that. I'm going to take some of these and show you another way you can do them too because you can cut them like that for chips. But what you can do is you can cut them real thin like this, like in a julienne. For little strips like this. And sometimes what I do, they don't have to be that thin. You can make them wider. Sometimes I cut them wider like this and make like a kicked up chili. And then I, you know, do that pie thing. <laughs> Tortilla pie, you know. Yeah. So sometimes what I do is I fry them in the hot oil like this too. You just kind of spread them around like that. These little strips. So while these are stripping in the hot oil, let me show you what we're going to do. I got the chicken meat. I got some limes. We're going to add some lime juice, kick it up a few notches, you know? I have a little cilantro, avocado, basically the garnishes. But what I love to do is I take, once the soup has great flavor, you know, don't be, a, don't be afraid to, uh, you got to taste it. You got to see where you are, you know? Let your brain work for a change, you know? Like mine just went, wow. <laughs> now, what I do to thicken this is I take those delicious tortillas like this, you see? And I crush them in there. Plus, it's a good way to get af the afternoon frustration out. You know, you just, you know, you just kind of do that. But you got to make sure they're fried really crispy. And when they come out, you salt them up really, really good, you see? Bust them up like that. I know you think I'm nuts, but that's all right. Because you're going to see how tasty this is. What that does, that's my thickening agent. Instead of a roux, instead of a potato, instead of cornstarch. Because what I do now is I get the boat motor out. You get the boat motor out and you just like... You add the boat motor in there with those tortillas that you added. See, you can't see this at home, like in Idaho or Wyoming, my friends in Canada or Hawaii. You got to see the smile this thing has. I added those tortillas in there, and it was like, bam, like that. It was a reverse bam. So good. So, now that the boat motor's done its thing, here's what we do. We take the strips out. Like anything you're going to fry, folks, right? Oh, yeah, this is when you got to season them now. And then, here's what I like to do. This one's for you, my friend. Oh, gracias. Oh, watch this. A little tortilla soup like this in the bottom. Oh, a little more tortilla soup. You work, you work so hard. 
Don't worry, I'll be at the restaurant later. <laughs> then, I want to take a little lime like this, just to kick it up. A little fresh lime juice. Then I'm going to take a little bit of avocado, like this, in the center. I'm going to take some chicken meat for you, like this. Ah, a little more. Some cilantro. Then I'm going to take my strips for you and stand them up just like that, just to kind of kick it up a couple of notches since you kicked it up for us here on Emerald Live. Gracias. If for some reason you just changed the channel, let me show you the reverse play of that. <laughs> Garnish with a little chicken. And I like to, uh, this lime, the lime does something magical. I guess that's why margaritas are so good. <laughs> well, that's what the crew said anyhow back in Chicago, but who knows? <laughs> Ain't that right, Doc? <laughs> <laughs> and we get a little bit of cilantro like this, and then some beautiful tortillas, just a little garnish like that. So there you go. Yeah. That's what you can do with your chicken, all right? See how clean my hands are? You know who I'm talking about. People on the Sopranos. <laughs> now, my other favorite thing, pork butt. That man, he never washes his hands, Johnny. You gotta season this pork butt up really good. A lot of salt, pepper. Maybe you wanna use a little cayenne, a little bit of my spice. You rub it down with a little oil. Set your oven on first for about 300 degrees for like the first hour. 400 degrees, excuse me. Oven boys. 400 degrees, the first hour. And you want to get the fattiest part of the pork fat. I mean, you go in there, massage it really good, salt, pepper, bam it, kick it up, do whatever you want. Fatty side down, a little agua in the bottom of the pot. Keeps it moist. After the first hour of 400 degrees, you lower it down to about 225, and it goes for about like another three hours. Oh, let me tell you, it's unbelievable. So you roast the pork butt like that. When the pork butt's done, four hours, it comes out, it looks like this. How do you know it's done? This is going to be so tender. You'll be able to just like pull it apart like this. You see how that's doing? You'll be able to get just like a fork like this, and the meat will just like come right apart. Now... Oh, and I love that crackling thing on there, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, nobody gets that. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. <laughs> then, we took small onions again. A little bit of butter. We just sauteed them, sauteed them, sauteed them, sauteed them until they were caramelized. Why? Because just like this, you see this? They get sweet like this when you caramelize them. Oh, yeah, look, you don't even... Take some bread and caramelized onions. Forget about it. You don't need anything else. You're in there for the day. But, as occasionally we say here on Emerald Live, self, do you want to kick it up a notch? Of course, my brain. Of course. So, we took this Spanish cheese, this con queso cheese. Oh, yeah, babe. And some chilies. I mean, you can buy them. Don't sweat it. You get, you can, you know, if you get them fresh, great. If not, relax. It's just like some cheese and onions. 
a little chilies. Bam, that's what I say, you know? Add them all in there. And then what you do is you just start cutting this pork, the butt, and it'll start coming, shredding it like this, just what we're doing, you see? And you keep shredding it like this after it cools. You see what I'm doing right there? And you add that inside of that. What are some of your, like, best-selling dishes? We have a budina steak. A budina steak? Yes, that okay. is uh, made with tortillas. Okay. And the filling is with cheese, uh, salsa verde. Okay. It's delicious. Um, what I was going to do is I got this filling like this. The con queso, the pork butt, the chilies like this. Chimichangas. You sell those? No. No. That's like more of the, well, we won't go there. <laughs> but anyhow, watch this real quick. You all with me so far? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pork butt, caramelized onions, some chilies, and some con queso. Give me a break, right? Salt and pepper. What you do, you take a little bit of that mixture like this, stick it in the center. Call them what you want. You make a, like a little package. You see, you fold it over, fold it over. Fold it over and fold it over. Now what do you do? I'd eat them, but <laughs> what they do is they usually fork them like this, so they pick them, and then they fry them. You don't want to do that. You don't have to do that. When we come back, I'm going to show you another incredible dish. Stick around. We'll be right back. <laughs> guy check this out tortilla soup little Hello. chicken in there spoons are right there tip boxes over there little napkins tortilla soup honey all right check that out for you a couple of extra special little garnishes just for you right there thank you very much you're welcome earlier i'm telling you it was like a neighborhood full of dogs thank you stay away from there there's a little spoon right there napkin thanks for coming by all right and the street guy. Hey, and the street guy. How you doing? <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. You never know when you might you may see him on the street, you know. All right, so we fried those things. Another name for these. If we had them thin, very thin like this, it would be uh, flotas. So you got them crispy like that. You want to season them. Then we just kind of simply garnish them with a little sour cream or a lot of sour cream. A little avocado. A lot more avocado. Hey, you may like tomato. You may like salsa. I'm just giving you a little version here. This is some fire roasted corn, which I actually love. And uh, a little bit of cilantro like that. So there you have it. Very, very simple like that. The fried version. All right. We took some of this fire roasted corn. We're going to make this uh, corn and uh, sort of cheese, con queso or goat cheese kind of sauce. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. If you got some of that filling left over, go the enchilada route. You take a little bit of the corn tortilla and a little water like that. Take a little bit of the filling that's left. The corn, soaking them like that in the water softens them up. See, you just fold them over like that. Then you can put it right inside your, like an oven casserole. See? You don't want to have them dry. They're going to have a problem dried like this, so you just soften them up. They're going to go in the oven anyhow. Then you take a little bit of that filling that you got left, just sort of roll them up, put them right inside of this like little earthware dish. Then generally what I like to do, 
Take a little bit of milk or cream, a little oil. Maybe you want to add a little cilantro. Maybe you want to add a little spice. And then I'm using a little salsa verde here. We'll put that right inside of this. Whisk that right in there. Sometimes they'll even put an egg in this too. And you pour that right over this thing. Three hundred fifty degrees. We're gonna blast this in the oven here. Sometimes you want to put a little bit more cheese on top. Go ahead. Add all the cheese you want. More cheese. Hey, maybe it's better. Then there's always dessert. Do you do a lot of desserts with uh, tortillas at all? Do you do any in your restaurant? Well, we, we have a mango fruit cup. A mango fruit cup. Yes, and then we put the, the fried julienne tortillas on top as a decoration. It's very, very tasty. One hour. I'm coming. <laughs> I got some cream cheese. You got to soften it up. Maybe this is a little New Orleans thing, but I got powdered sugar. See, if you don't like the person near you, you can. <laughs> I would not do that to you. <laughs> My pal. So you're going to get this sweet. Maybe you want to add a little bit of vanilla inside. You could do that as well. A good buddy of mine has a restaurant in Atlanta called Nava. Sells a lot of these. And what we do is we take the banana, peel it, cut it in half. Basically, he takes a tortilla like this, depending on the size. Cut it in half. And what he'll do is he'll take a little bit of this cream cheese and sugar vanilla filling on the tortilla, kind of like the crepe, you know? Kind of spread it around a little bit. Add the banana, fold it over. And basically, we take a little butter like this in the pan, melt it down, and we're going to start sauteing this. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to finish these and our quesadillas. Stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Emma Lagasse here, and uh, Doc Gibbs and Cliff. What can I say? And all of our great friends from Rosa Mexicana. We want to thank them in New York City for coming out. Tortillas, beautiful people. So, Miss Rosio, now I'm going to have to make you one more food of love thing before you go since Thank you made you. so many people happy. I don't want to uh, cook these too hot, folks. The little banana inside is beginning to melt. It's really messing with everybody's brain in here right now. <laughs> it's hard to see. But uh, you cook them nice and golden brown, and you can see, I hope you can see that. Buck, can we get a, can we get a shot of how this is looking in here? You see how it's all... Oh. Three for me. Take them out. And um, the way that I like to finish them, or at least that I'm finishing for my friend. So I have a beautiful plate. They told me pink, you love pink. I'm going to uh, take a little bit of my special caramel. And I'm just going to uh, do a little, a little of that here. And uh, take a little dollop of sweetened crema. And um, a little bit of my banana, cut like such. And a little bit of uh, fresh mint. And for you, just a little bit more special caramel. Maybe a little bit of Mexican chocolate would work as well. Oh. 
So I have you both to share that. Thank you. Carolyn thank as you. well. Thank you. And I want to thank you very much for all your help. You come back anytime. Bring the boss. Yeah. And I hope you another 15 years here in New York City. Gracias. Rosa Muchas Mexicano. Gracias. All right. Hey, what can I say? That's a big old wrap today, but we had a lot of fun. I'm Emeril Lagasse. Hope you had a good time. See you tomorrow, everybody. Tortillas, we got tortilla soup, guacamole, chips, salsa, we got wraps, we got pork wraps, queso wraps. Hey, how you doing? Two of them? I'm going down to a new location right now. <laughs>